class, we were discussing about kingdom protesta and kingdom protesta has been grouped into five different groups. Among them, in the previous session, we had discussed about four different types of uh, groups of protesta. In today's video, we shall discuss the last type under kingdom protesta, that is the fifth type is protozoans. These are the pro protestants which are heterotrophs and live as predators or parasites. These are the protozoans which are heterotrophic in nature to obtain or to derive their nutrition. That means heterotrophs means these protozoans are depending on other organisms for the purpose of nutrition and also uh, they are living as predators or parasites. That means predators means they are harming the uh, other organisms for the purpose of nutrition. The type of obtaining nutrition is called as parasitic form. Predators means these protozoans will capture some other microscopic organisms which are living in the aquatic medium and that is of the predator type. That means they are uh, engulfing the some other microscopic organisms for the purpose of nutrition. That is what they put a predator form. And parasite form is they are harming but they are not killing an organism. Instead they are harming the organisms and they are deriving the nutrition from them and that we call it as the parasitic form of protozoans. In most of the uh, characters they resemble like animals because we discussed in previous class itself that is the protozoans are acting or they are resembling the characteristics like both plants, animals as well as like fungi and most of their characters is like animals. Hence they are considered as because of that reason hence they are considered as primitive relative of animals. They are considered as primitive relative of animals because they are showing or resembling various characteristics related to animals. These protozoans are further classified into four different types such as the first one amoeboid protozoan, second one flagellated protozoan, third one ciliated protozoan and the last one is the sporozoans. Let me take the first one amoeboid protozoan. These are the protozoans which lives in fresh water. These are the protozoans which lives in fresh water, marine water or else in just the moist soil. They can also survive in the moist soil. Amoeboid protozoans can survive or they live in fresh water, marine water as well as in the moist soil also. They produce false food or which we call it as pseudopodia. Pseudo stands for false and podia stands for food. So the pseudopodia is nothing but these amoeboid protozoans are forming the false food for their movement and that creation of false food we call them as a pseudopodia. Why that false food is framed? To move and capture the prey. To move and capture the prey. Best example is amoeba and entamoeba. And this is the examples for amoeboid protozoans. Next, flagellated protozoan. The name itself is telling here flagellated. That means these protozoans possess or they consist of flagella. 
for the purpose of locomotion. But when we speak about amoeboid protozoans, pseudopodia was the locomotive structure. But here, under flagellated protozoans, the flagella is present for the locomotion. The flagellated protozoans are free living or they are parasitic form. As we discussed before itself, parasitic is nothing but these organisms are harming the other organisms to derive their nutrition. And they may also cause diseases. Like this, they are free living or they, are, they may be parasitic form. They possess flagella. That is why we are calling them as flagellated protozoans. They possess flagella for locomotion. Example, trypanosoma, parasitic form and also causes sleeping sickness. It's a paras uh, parasitic form of uh, ciliated protozoan which also causes another disease that is nothing but sleeping sickness. These are the two types and the third type is ciliated protozoan. Here as the name says these are the protozoans which have or which consist of a cilia which consist of cilia. For their locomot as their locomotory structure. Ciliated protozoans are aquatic, they are motile, and forms which actively move in the water body by the presence of thousands of cilia. That means the ciliated protozoans consisting of thousands of cilia. For the loc as the locomotory structures and they are capable of moving from one region or one place to another place. That's why we are using the word motile. They are motile form which actively move in water body by the presence of thousands of cilia. They have a cavity called gullet which opens outside. And the cell surface shows coordinate movement of cilia. And these, as we are using the word coordinate movement, all the cilia are working at a time in a specific direction where it has to move, in which direction it has to move. And very coordinately, the cilia are working or performing their movement of cilia is shown where in a very coordinated manner and steers the water that means it pushes or moves the water along with the food it pushes into gullet and the best example for ciliated protozoan is nothing but the paramecium we can find thousands of cilia in the paramecium the fourth type of protozoan that is nothing but this porozoan this includes diversified organism. While speaking about the ciliated protozoan or flagellated protozoan or amoeboid type of protozoan, we were finding very few in number because uh, all the protozoans do not possess cilia or all the protozoans do not possess flagella or all the protozoans do not show amoeboid movement. But here, under sporozoans, we find diversified or diversity in organisms that have been an infectious spores-like stage in their life cycle. That means, it's clear here, these sporozoans are the parasitic form or they are infectious. They are causing diseases while crossing or while completing their life cycle. These Various types of uh, stages is crossed or spores are produced and that is why we are using the term sporozoans. Here we have taken the example as plasmodium. The plasmodium is nothing but the malarian parasite. This malarian parasite is uh, causing the disease or 
causing the fever, malarial fever. So, malarial parasites, there are different types uh, under uh, plasmodium. Uh, these uh, plasmodium uh, uh, are uh, malarial parasites are causing the malarial fever and they are showing different sporal stages throughout their life cycle. Uh, during the time of completion of their life cycle and hence because of that reason itself we are we, ha uh, we have classified them under the sporozoans as we discussed uh, in the previous slides we saw the example of a ciliated uh, protozoan and sporozoan as well as the flagellated protozoan and amoeboid protozoan. Uh, we shall see uh, the pictures and diagram. The first one what we discussed that is nothing but amoeboid protozoan. Here is a picture of amoeba. This is not very new to us because since from uh, very lower classes we are seeing, we are learning about the single celled organism that is nothing but amoeba. Here is a picture of amoeba. Here is a diagram. See, we can observe uh, the complete cell of the amoeba is enclosed with the outermost covering that is cell membrane. And within the cell membrane, we can find the fluid or the plasma, the innermost plasma which is found in the center of the cell or central region of the cell that is nothing but endoplasm and outermost fluid or the plasm which is present very next to the cell membrane that is nothing but the ectoplasm. By the help of this fluid that is ectoplasm they start showing or they can create pseudo Podia, that is nothing but the false foot towards which direction it has to move. It will create uh, or it will extend its cell membrane and with the cell membrane there will be extension of ectoplasm as well as next to the exto, um, ectoplasm there will be the extension of endoplasm. Both these plasms will move and pushes the cell membrane towards the specific direction where it has to move or in which direction it has to move and it will create the projections like this or a foot like projections which we are calling them as pseudopodia that is nothing but false foot and also throughout the uh, plasm we can also find a dark colored uh, structure that is nothing but a nucleus which encloses the genetic material and also there is the presence of foot vacuole as well as the contracted vacuole and here is a vacuole for uh, digestion that is nothing but the digestive vacuole like this this single cell has uh, very specific structures in it to perform various functions and it is of uh, it consists of all the functions to perform a, their own specific function and hence uh, amoeba that is a single cell organism can also be uh, considered as one of the best example for the amoeboid protozoans. And next, uh, second type, that is nothing but the paramecium, is the best example for ciliated protozoan. The paramecium, what we are observing here, is also a single cell organism. And this is also co uh, completely covered by the outermost membrane, that is nothing but plasma membrane, and which encloses with the fluid the complete. <laughs> plasma membrane is covered with the small hair like projections or small hair like structure that is not one or two but thousands of hair like projections 
are present that is what we are calling them as the cilia and within the fluid we can find posterior contractile vacuole that means why we are using posterior contractile vacuole because it is present in the posterior or end region of the paramecium and also uh, cytoprot macronucleus why the word macro we are using macro is nothing but the nucleus is very large and also there is another nucleus which we are naming as micronucleus one is a smaller one and another one is a very large nucleus that is why we are differentiating them as macronucleus micronucleus and also there is the anterior contractile vacuole the contractile vacuole is present in the tip that is in the anterior position as well as in the posterior position of the paramecium and hence this anterior contractile vacuole e is termed as anterior contractile vacuole and which is in the end that is we are terming them as posterior contractile vacuole and here is the food vacuole galech and also the cytoprot this is the structure of paramecium and can be taken as the example for ciliated protozoan next comes another example for flagellated protozoan that is uh, trypanosoma here even this is also a single celled organism and undulating membrane is present within the cell of the trypanosoma and from the one of the tip that is from the one of the posterior tip there is a small elongated tubular whip like structure is present and that is what uh, termed as flagellum that is meant for the purpose of locomotion and it consists of fla flagella for locomotion as a locomotory structure that is why it is classified under flagellated protozoan and that is the last type that is sporozoan example is plasmodium we are what we are observing here is nothing but the plasmodium parasite that is malarial parasite what we are observing here is the plasmodium malarial parasite so it's not so clear to observe different spores or different stages of uh, uh, plasmodium and which is a causative agent of malaria this is how we can differentiate the types of protozoa